and listening to Tony TV. For more inspirational stories, join us. to Tony TV. Inspiring people across the planet to be a little kinder and a little more gentle with each other. Delivering inspirational TV, one story at a time, from my lounge to yours. I'm your host, Tony L And welcome back everyone. I'm Tony Lontis and this is the Everyday Business Show. Now before we get on the show, just a reminder, if you're listening live on LinkedIn, Facebook, YouTube, Twitch or Twitter, Payo is ready and waiting to answer all your questions and provide you with the links that you need to anything that we talk about on the show today. Our glorious guest also has her own website, which we'll mention later. And if you don't take note of that, you can always jump on to tinylontis.com and find out about our amazing guests on the website. A reminder too that you can catch up on the shows on Binge TV Networks USA, Hero Go TV. USA and the Tony TV channel app, which is available on all Roku, LG and Samsung smart TVs across the planet. Now, we have been getting into the regular habit of doing a welcome to country. And for those of you that are Australians listening to this, you will know exactly what that's about. But for our international listeners, it's simply about a movement that acknowledges the special and important role Indigenous communities play in the development of this country, Australia's cultural identity. And Welcome to Country goes a little like this. I respectfully acknowledge the people of the Yugambeh language region, that's Gold Coast, Queensland, Australia, the traditional owners of the land in which we broadcast and pay my respect to the elders past and present and all the Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples here today listening live or listening to the replay. Now, we have a special guest by the name of Danny V with us today. And before I introduce you to her, here's what you need to know. Danny V is a mind and body mentor and she helps women become healthier in mind, body and soul and she considers that her superpower. Danny is a qualified personal trainer, health and wellness coach and a mindset mentor and she takes a holistic and intuitive approach to online fitness, diet and nutrition coaching. Nothing makes Danny happier than watching women embrace body positivity, learn to love themselves and become stronger, smarter and more empowered. It's the best thing ever and it drives Danny's personal and professional passion. Danny's main focus is helping her clients build positive, kick-ass, run the world attitudes and when women arm themselves with a strong powerful mindset then healthy exercise and nutrition choices that come naturally their confidence and self-esteem soar. Danny is a mother, a mistake maker, a risk taker and because of this she is forever learning, changing and evolving. Danny uses all her experiences, knowledge and skills to support her clients and their goals with a caring, loving and empathetic approach. Empath empathic. Both. 
approach. It is her mission to help ambitious women love their body and live their life with unstoppable confidence. Danny, welcome to the show. Thank you so much. What a beautiful welcome. Thank you, Tony. I'm delighted to have you here today. So Danny and I met through Ozmompreneurs recently. And um, as you know, um, I was lucky enough to be a recipient of an Ozmompreneur Award last year too, in fact. But Ozmompreneurs is a fabulous platform for mums in business who uh, want to drive their business further. And Danny is part of that bigger family. And so, Danny, I wanted to start by talking a little bit about your background and growing up. Can mm-hmm. you tell me more about Danny? Oh, wow. So growing up, I actually I moved all over Queensland. So mm-hmm. my um, parents, uh, we moved every couple of years. They owned a business and my dad worked for um, what is was called the water resources back then. Um, yeah. So we moved around a lot. So um, I, I learned to be quite social because I sort of had to re, reintroduce myself every two years at yeah. schools and things like that. So I think that's where like my outgoing personality comes from because, you know, I just sort of had to enter um, different scenarios all the time, which I loved. Like I absolutely loved that lifestyle. Um, And then um, throughout school, I went to a private school in Brisbane. And Mm. um, then when I left school, I studied music at the Conservatorium of Music. Ah, okay. Mm. Yeah, so I um, did pedagogy there, which is like small group um, training for piano. And Mm. that's actually where I started my business career because I started my piano teaching business when I was only 19 years old and then just kept Mm -hmm. going onwards and upwards from there. Yeah. Wow. Mm. Um, I, part of, uh, most part of my childhood was spent learning um, organ, so not piano but organ, and doing the whole um, testing and and, um, I forget what they were called back then, but they were, you know, the levels of... um, of, AMEB, um, Australian Music Examination Board. Yeah. That's the one. And I can yeah. still remember being terrified of those in-person testing where you had to um, play one of the big pieces of music that you'd spent the last six months practicing day in, day out. Mm-hmm. So familiar with that. And I, and the teachers that I had were just amazing people, amazing uh, women, incidentally, and mm. who were very patient loving and kind and supportive through that whole process but that's a wonderful background to go into business so you were a piano teacher for a while and then what happened um i fell pregnant with my first child Mm -hmm. um and i just had like a change of heart because i was i didn't Mm -hmm. fall pregnant with her until i was 29 i had her when i was 30 so Mm -hmm. you know i'd been doing that for um a long time and um i guess my my passion had changed because I I absolutely loved the music and I loved um, coaching the children and the schools and everything but I felt like that there was more there was more within me and Mm -hmm. I wanted to serve the world more and I didn't feel like I could do that through piano teaching Um, so then I started just like a fitness like a ten dollar boot camp fitness business Mm -hmm. Um, and I juggled both the businesses until like that that business got big enough yes Um, and I only let go of the piano teaching business probably about five years ago now yeah. um it was hard to let go of <laughs> yeah um, so um so I, I I started that and then as I grew as a person because when I started mm-hmm. that business I was married to um an emotionally and mentally abusive man so he yeah. I had to take my kids with me everywhere I went um so then I created this business where I had babysitting at the bit at the classes and yeah and so then I could take my kids along and it wasn't like a big thing that I had my kids there because everybody brought mm. their kids along and uh-huh. um that's sort of how that fitness brand morphed um Amazing. and during that time yeah during that time I started getting really involved in um, my own personal growth and my own personal development to you know find the strength to know what I wanted in that um mm-hmm. business that you know, with my husband at the time. And Mm -hmm. so I um, discovered neuro linguistics programming. Yeah. And I actually went through that myself. And then Mm -hmm. I have since, well, that was um, nine years ago, I think now, Tony, that I became a practitioner. 
Mm -hmm. Um, And so then I started bringing that into the fitness business. So it wasn't really a fitness business anymore. And then so that all morphed into like bringing like the holistic side of things. So Mm -hmm. um, I really, I really became passionate about making women see that they can have that strength through their mind and then the exercise and the nutrition come afterwards. Yeah. Yes. And just just going back to, if you don't mind, um, going back to being in an abusive relationship, the one of the vulnerabilities I don't think that we talk about often enough, and particularly with women, is that if you don't have a positive self image, then you are in fact vulnerable to abuse, because you beat yourself up so badly inside your head that when a man does it to you, you don't actually recognize for the longest time that that's what's happening. Was it a similar journey for you, Danny? Yeah, very much so. Like I, I, I honestly didn't even believe I was in a relationship like that until I left. Yeah. Um, I just got to a point where I felt like I didn't feel safe. I didn't feel happy, but like I just, I didn't notice that, I was yeah. had such a low self-esteem and I didn't notice that when he would say those things it was so easy for me to believe because I already believed it about myself yes um so yeah I, I truly believe that you know you can you can abuse yourself so much that you don't see that somebody else is doing it to you as well and mm. the thing about it too Danny is that you don't realize how much you're beating yourself up <sighs> until you become aware of that and um, for lots of women, that actually, in some cases, never occurs or occurs at varying stages of life. When you suddenly, it's pointed out to you, these are the words and things that you're saying to yourself in your head. These are the things that no one else hears but you, but they're inc- they, we beat ourselves up. Mm. look at ourselves in the mirror and go oh my god look at those wrinkles oh my god look at that that tummy look at those boobs look at that like we do it um and i think that it's something that we need to be openly talking about so that other women realize that looking in the mirror and beating yourself up is not okay it's not helpful it leaves you to a place where you're not living your best life and where you open yourself up to things that are not good for you like bad relationships absolutely and your unconscious mind believes everything you're telling it so if you're looking in the mirror Mm -hmm. and saying oh my goodness, you're so ugly. Look at that fat, flobby stomach. You know, oh, look at that cellulite. You're so disgusting. And, you know, you think that you're just saying it to yourself, but then you actually put that into the cells of your body and you start actually living and breathing what you're saying to yourself. So then, you know, it's, it's, it's so easy to attract that to you as well. Yeah. And yeah. it's it's actually a, it's quite a lot of work to swap that mindset and that's Perhaps, when yeah. NLP comes in because it mm. works at that subconscious level and actually makes it easier, quicker mm. and more long lasting. Danny, were you surprised when you first started getting into NLP that the results that you could have on people's lives? Oh, very much so. And I still I still I shine after every session with my my clients with the NLP. I do use other modalities now because I've yeah. been doing it for so long. So I bring in other things that I use along the the Danny version of NLP. Yes. Needs um, to be Dannyfied. Yeah, Dannyfied. Um, and I I honestly do get blown away every single time with NLP because you're not you're not rehashing the problem and you're not talking about the problem and you're not rehashing the problem so it's not always it's not this really down and trodden thing that you're going to come back and talk about it the next time I love Mm. how it just takes away the emotions and decisions and then can create like a better space for you and you do it all all on your own you know Mm. I just guide my clients they do it all on their own it's having and to be honest with the the audience i've used nlp many 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 times to get through blocks or to sort out things that were going on in my own mind um denny obviously you were doing the music teaching and and learning um in the background was there a specific 
specific point where you thought, oh gosh, let's combine this with health and um, wellness and physical fitness of women. What was that moment for you where you put the two together? Because I'm just reflecting for myself that uh, and I've had um, fitness coaches before and I'm just thinking, gosh, I don't think anyone's combined the fitness um, part of it with the mind part of it. And I'm mm. just wondering when that uh, connection happened for you. Um, very early in the piece um, mm. because I'm very passionate and, and very intuitive about what people need. So when people come and work with me, I already mm. have like that, that um, knowledge of what they'll need and yeah. um, I'm such a strong believer that you know no matter how much you work on your body so no matter how much you work on your fitness mm -hmm. you're not going to see that beautiful woman in the mirror until you work on your mind um, you yeah. know because there, there's stories and there's many stories that I could I could speak about of women that mm. they can lose 20 kilos and they look phenomenal to everybody else on the outside world, but they look yes. in the mirror and if they haven't worked on their mind, they still see that woman with 20 kilos on her. Yeah. So, so I, I, I think like very early in the beginning working with women and then seeing them have that transformation and not seeing it within themselves. I, I always like, even in my fitness sessions, I, I mm. sort of weave in, my yes. NLP and my and my coaching because I think that's really important for the women to understand the power of inner self confidence, mm -hmm. um, and you know even like my fitness business isn't a fitness business anymore. Like people do come it's to me for that holistic transformation, yeah, um, because they know that I'm going to work with their mind and their body and like fueling their body. Like fueling yes. your body is fueling your mind, not just mm -hmm. food and liquid. Mm -hmm. um, so I think the switch was really early on in the piece where I could see my clients yeah. having the transformation, but they couldn't see it the way I did. And I really wanted them to see it. Ah, okay. Mm. And did it, when you did that swip, swap, did it have dramatic results for your clients? Mm, yeah. So every single one of my clients, you know, if they, if they put the work in, <laughs> they get yeah. phenomenal results that like we're always surprised with what they get you know like even in the fitness business like an eight-week program they yeah. they can't believe the results they get when they're not restricting themselves on anything they don't go mm -hmm. they don't go no carbs no fats like in that nutrition side of things because mm -hmm. we just mm -hmm. work on we mainly work on the mindset we work on the way that they speak to themselves we work on the gratitude we work on eliminating limiting beliefs that are coming up and then everything else just flows and so they still see um, a change in their fitness level levels. They still see um, uh, results within the dropping of kilos. They All of that comes just from the way that you weave in the work around the mind. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Oh, amazing, amazing. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, so um, you see yourself um, as a transformologist effectively and mm -hmm. I'm guessing that 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 has wonderful impacts on women's lives. Can mm -hmm. you tell us about some of the things that your clients have gone on to do without mentioning names, of course, but some of the things and some of the changes that they've brought about in their lives after spending time with you? Mm. So the biggest changes that I've seen in quite a few clients is they change their careers um, ah. <laughs> when they come to me. So because they find like who they truly authentically are and they find the confidence within themselves, you know, recently I've had two women that she's, comp one lady's left her job and gotten this amazing job over in the U S like, so now she's just working, you know, online with her company in the U S because she, mm -hmm. she did her, she did one-on-one -on -one, um, coaching with me mm -hmm. and she just had this incredible transformation of just finding that self-confidence and that self-love again to actually go and go for an interview for the, for the career of her dreams and she's got it you know so and then I've got another lady just recently that um she's she's gone and um for an interview for promotion in her career mm -hmm. and and she's she's gotten that and she's actually what's happening now is where she is is they're saying no we don't want you to go and so oh. she's got that like you know the possibilities yeah, yeah, that of value you know, having the value and everything which is really exciting yeah. Um, and then, you know, there's another lady a few years ago um, with the career changing is that she um, she actually started up her own business and started up mm -hmm. her own nutrition business and and um, really stepped into that where like she started studying and, um, mm -hmm. you know, she found that confidence in that 
the direction for where they want to yes. go because then they know who they are so they know what they want yeah. yeah yeah and then like other transformations are just finding that comfort like really incredible confidence like I'm thinking of another lady at the moment that she you know she'd lost herself to being a mum yeah um, and you know you lose your identity and you forget you who do. you are mm-hmm. and so many women do you know and it, and then she's just found this incredible confidence now and you know just even the clothes that she wants to wear and she you know she's working away way up to wearing short shorts and you know mm-hmm. she just feels so she's like like just exuding confidence and it's so beautiful to see um, so that's yeah. a huge thing for my clients as well, like their confidence in who they are and, and shining bright and having that voice is really comes in. Yeah. Yeah. Because let's face it, Danny, um, the world from a woman's perspective, and this is, again, not all women, but it's tough. It's tough being a woman. It's tough being a woman in this world. It's tough being a woman at this time. And whilst I feel that there are changes afoot and I feel that there is a a change around women and towards women and for women, we're still not there yet. So for many women, they just don't value themselves in Mm -hmm. who they are, what they do and their place in society. And then conversely, society doesn't value the very, very important processes around caring and loving and bringing children up. We just don't value that highly enough. Mm -hmm. And for many women, that's what happens when you become a mum. You become a carer for this small human being who is completely reliant on you and you forget that there's a world out there. And I actually think that we need to need to support all mums in that journey and yeah. know that, that that's an important role. And, of course, there's dads out there that, that do that as well. But from this point and this moment in time, it remains predominantly a woman's role to bring the children up and to care for the house and do all of those things. And in doing those things, which are as important to a global economy as businesses and mm. companies, the caring of the next generation of humanity is just as important. And so yeah. that's where women get lost, don't they, Danny? They just yeah. fall into that, I'm a mum now, and and we as society don't always value them the way that they need and should be valued. Yeah, Danny, absolutely. I want to know, um, we've talked about some of your clients and I'm just that you work with a broad variety of women. Do you work with men at all? Um, no, I do work with men actually that have special mm-hmm. needs. So yes, um, yes. I do do fitness training with men with special needs because I can bring the mindset in with them. So I do currently have just two clients of the, mm. um, their special needs and I have one man that he is... Um, ASD and yes. high anxiety, like very, mm-hmm. very high anxiety. Mm-hmm. And another man, he is um, nonverbal. He's ASD. He's Aww. Down syndrome. And yeah, he's, but they like that makes me shine bright because they can do everything that everyone else can do. If they're given the yeah. time and they're given, given the, the confidence that they Absolutely. can do it. Um, yeah. So yeah, I do work with men in that aspect. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Um, What's your favourite sort of woman to work with? For the audience listening out there, tell me about the fa- your favourites. Mm, so my favourite woman, I would say, is someone that's aware of personal development. So they're already mm-hmm. like looking into wanting to have a shift. They want to, they want to find who they are um, yep. and they're ready to do the work. So someone that's really passionate about putting themselves first because they know that that's mm. going to be able to serve everybody else around them. And they don't know how to do it. And so then they reach out to me and that's how I can guide them. Yeah. Yeah. Amazing. Mm. Um, You talked earlier at the start of the program about, um, before we went on air actually, about the retreat that you've got on this weekend. Can you please tell us about the retreat, what you're doing, where it is? Can people, is it booked out already? 
Not yet. There's still a few tickets left. So okay. if you want to come along, we still have space. Yes, definitely. So um, I'm running this retreat in Sanford in Brisbane, Queensland mm-hmm. um, on Saturday, the yes. 29th of January. It's 10 a.m. till 2 p.m. And it is all about intentional 2022. So mm-hmm. it's about letting go of the hangover of 2021 that we've all yeah. been through. <laughs> Just letting go of all of that yeah. BS. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> and bringing in the intentional you and, and this is something that I really love to teach with my my people is like bringing in who you want to be mm. so intentional goals are so different just to setting the smart goals it's it's about yes. really intentionally living and breathing what that is mm. um, and we're going to be starting with a beautiful indigenous smoking ceremony yes. and that is designed to just let go and you know let go of all the bad um, and then we'll, we're going to be moving into um, one of my um, designed masterclasses about setting your intentions, but really mm-hmm. setting it to be who you want to be. Um, and then we'll move into a yoga flow and a meditation where I'll use one of my NLP processes to plant that into your unconscious mind. So wow. that intention will be in your being before you leave us. Yeah. And then we're going to finish off with a really beautiful women's circle to connect and, and really celebrate what we've done that day. Yeah, oh, so I'm so excited about the transformation these women are going to have. Yeah, yeah so that excited. sounds good. Now, what's the best way anyone listening can connect with you today if they're interested about the retreat on Saturday? Is it via email? Yes, email would be the best, absolutely. So email me straight away if you want to get a ticket. <laughs> and they, <laughs> and Danny's email is <laughs> D-A-N-N-I at dannyv.com that's danny with a double n and an i at dannyv.com and i'd encourage you if you're listening and you just got four hours um available on saturday and you're close to brisbane sunshine coast or gold coast jump on and grab those tickets because there's doesn't sound like there's very many left (laughs) at all and it's in samford in brisbane Yes, and it's only for four hours, but incredible deliver- deliverables from Danny. Um, so you work, uh, you do retreats, you work mm-hmm. one-on-one. What mm-hmm. sorts of other programs do you have, Danny? I have this incredible 12-month program as well where um, women can work with me for 12 months um, and we, we, we come together twice a month so we come into Mm -hmm. like a group coaching session twice a month they get to have access to a membership where I interview other um, wellness um, people all around the world where they can really support the women and you know we've got sexuality we talk about spirituality we talk about you know um, nutrition and and the naturopathy side of nutrition and there's just so many women that I've already interviewed that's already in that membership and then there's new interviews every single month um, mm-hmm. And then each month is th- themed to a different um, to a different um, transformation. So it's all about uh-huh. you know for the women that are, are currently just hiding in the shadows because they don't have that self confidence, you know. And you could be like a top career woman and still hiding from yes, <laughs> the next absolutely. step up. And so absolutely. this is just giving them the the guidance to be able to then step into their like divine feminine power. So mm-hmm. yeah, it's it's really transformational. And I only take on ten women for this coaching yeah. program, so it's yeah. really um, intimate as well. And that's a lovely number. Tens tens a lovely number for people who might feel a little bit shy or or introverted. Mm. There's something something beautiful happens when when women get together and 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 um, talk and chat and socialize and and get to know each other the there is a combined energy between mm. women that is. Uh, incredibly powerful in moving them from a stuck state to an empowered state and Denny seeing as we're talking so much about um, fitness and nutrition um, I'm just pondering some um, of your expertise around what is an average fitness um i know there's no average women and i know but what are some of the simple things that you can do in everyday life that are good for your fitness walking if you can do nothing else go for a walk and then that's Uh actually really good for your mental health as well um 
And then for women, like if you just want to do body weight exercise, like you can easily do um, just some easy body weight exercises. Mm -hmm. Um, I actually run all of my classes online. So if you wanted to come and have a specialist guide you, um, I actually have an online membership for all of my classes as well. Um, So, you know, just for women, it's really important to be aware, like even if, especially if you've had children, to be aware of your pelvic floor and not just go in and start doing, you know, burpees Mm -hmm. and jumping everywhere and have all all things go wrong. Yes. (laughs) Um, So, so it's just really important. Like if you're only starting out, I'd say get walking, just go for like Mm -hmm. a five or 10 minute walk because if. So you can start with a five or 10 minute walk. That's yeah. Because that's doable, isn't it? A five or a 10 minute walk every day or every other day. What do you recommend? If you're in front of a desk, so if you're a career woman that's in front of the desk mm-hmm. all the time, I'd, I'd suggest try and do it every day and it's a great mm-hmm. brain break as well from your desk. Um, so, yeah, if you can do it every day and it's only five to ten minutes, I mean, everybody has five to ten minutes in their day. Yeah. No matter how busy yeah. you are, you do. Yeah. yeah, that's exactly right. You've just yeah. got to say, okay, yeah. I've got to, this is all five minutes, that's all I've got, off you go, go for a walk, bang, back on with. But yeah. that starts a, a habit forming doesn't it Danny absolutely yeah 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 and that's what I do with all of my coaching is we just start small habits and then you you actually can't believe what you can do by the end of it yeah 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 um Mm. for busy women that's incredible advice that you can start so small and then build things up um I'm thinking about my age group, which is the over 50s, the over the mid 50s, um, and thinking about our special fitness and nutritional needs. What's some advice around our age group? Yeah, so for over 50s, I would mm. say walking is the yeah. best thing to get you started as well, and body weight as well, like yeah. body weight activity. So you could just do like a few squats and a few mm-hmm. um, push ups and things like that just to get your body moving. If you really um, want to build like a stronger core because you haven't looked after yourself and you've got sore back and things like that, mm. Pilates is a really amazing yes. um exercise to do for women if you've neglected yourself for a long time um or just make sure that you do go to a women's health specialist so not just any old um pt it's really important to go to a women's health specialist yeah so i I would would suggest that to over 50s for Mm. sure Mm. and what about in terms of nutrition denny um so for nutrition i would i don't agree on any diets because the first three letters of diet is die yeah. And so the, yeah. So, <laughs> and the first awesome. Um, That's yeah, so good the first to hear. Four letters. The four, yeah. first four letters of healthy is heal. So if you think about living a healthy lifestyle mm-hmm. and fueling your body, so I I I do use a lot of mindset around my nutrition coaching in the sense mm-hmm. that if you if you're fueling your body and ask yourself these three questions, these are the three questions that I um, um, offer my clients to ask themselves is you ask yourself, how do I feel before I eat this? So say if you're going to go and eat a donut, because everybody always talks about donuts when I'm (laughs) coaching them. Okay, yeah. (laughs) um, So say if you're going to eat the donut, how am I going to feel before it? I'm going to feel great because I really want this donut. How are you mm-hmm. going to feel during it? If you're being mindful, are you really feeling great the whole way through eating that donut or you're starting to feel a little bit yucky? How am I um, going to feel afterwards? Am yeah. I going to feel guilty because I've got all this negative self-talk? Do I feel really bloated? Am I feeling mm-hmm. sick because I've eaten this whole donut? And then then that's your lesson that maybe yes. you'll start out and you'll have half the donut because you don't feel feel sick after half the donut. Because if you love donuts, you don't have to cut them out, but maybe don't eat a whole donut. I- Actually, that was my next question um, was around those things that we really enjoy are, and if they're done in moderation, like uh, so my guilty pleasure is two little squares of chocolate every couple of days. So that's my that's my thing that I love and I savour those two little pieces of chocolate. <laughs> in a healthy diet and fitness regime, are those things okay? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. I yeah, don't think good. you need so, to cut anything out. Um, just I, w- I do say cut out processed foods like Maccas and KFC oh, yeah, yeah. and all of yeah. that stuff just because it makes you feel really sick. But if you yes. even want that once in a while, it's actually fine. Yeah. So this is know. about it. This yeah. is about it generally doing what's best for you um, versus 
cutting things out. I wanted to ask you, when mm. I was thinking about our interview last night, um, I was thinking, I wonder what Danny, um, we hear lots of people talking about the um, fasting. Oh, it's not a diet. It's, it's, they fast for a long period of time. And I wondered what you, as a nutrition and fitness specialist, thought about that because I know some women have really good results from that whole fasting uh, regime but I just wondered from from your perspective what are your thoughts on that mm, and like it's it's um, interesting you say that because a lot of people doctors do suggest that to women over over oh, 50 um, okay I always say to women that ask me about that is breakfast is called that because it's yeah, you're breaking it's, the fast yes Yes, that's so, why I'm asking because yeah. I'm like, mm, that doesn't quite like we've always been told that, you know, breakfast is really important because your body's been so long without food and yada, yada. But a lot of the, the women that I've talked to about this process is they're not eating their first meal until 11, 12 o'clock um, yeah. during the day. So, for, and I haven't known um, enough people working in fitness and nutrition to say but what's the impact of that on your body is it good is it is it primal is it primitive should we be doing that um you know what if it works for you and you're doing yeah. it and you feel good about it i would yes. say keep doing it okay. but i wouldn't suggest it to people because breakfast is break the fast but then mm. you also have to be mindful that you're not eating something at 10 o'clock at night and then 12 o'clock at night because that's also not not great if you're eating yes. that all through the night as well. So it's mm -hmm. just really what your situation is. If you've started doing the fasting and it's working for you and you aren't losing energy yes. and you're not faint because you haven't eaten um, yeah. and you're seeing results, well, you know, don't, don't stop, okay. stop it. But I wouldn't suggest it because it's another diet, isn't it? Yes, it is. It's, it's, just, a, <laughs> it's just another way of looking at, at things. Danny, yeah. in, you've been coaching for a long time now and in mm. your experience, in terms of women, we all have very different body types and shapes and heights. Um, in terms of the fads that we've seen around nutrition in recent years, um, eating for body type, eating for blood type, eating for... From your experience... Are there some things that work better for certain sorts of people versus – have you found that your experience, in your experience? Mm, so, like, certain things work for some clients that don't work for others, definitely. Yes, um, okay. And I guess that's what I was saying to you um, when we first started speaking, like, intuitively mm. – yeah. And it could it could just be because I've been doing this for 13 years as well. Yes. <laughs> um, I can I can I know what my client needs. So but what yes. I suggest to you what you need, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna tell the next person. So, you know, I can't mm. say this is what I do for my clients because I, I do never I never ever do the same thing for one person because so everybody very... needs something different. Okay, so it's very individualized for that very particular person. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Mm. Um, because, yes, as I said, that there's lots of fads that, that, that come and go and then you see people that have these amazing results and others that have no results at all, So, which leads me to think that not everything is going to work for every person. No, and it doesn't. That's right. That's exactly mm. right. Mm. Do people tend to have um, an innate understanding of the foods that are good for them or do people ha completely lost any idea of what's good and what's bad? I think so many people are so overwhelmed because there's so much, yeah. like you said, about the diets over the yes. internet. Like there's so much information that mm -hmm. I find that majority of people are just so overwhelmed they don't even know what to do. They don't know yep. what is good for them. They don't know what they should be putting in their bodies to help them yes. be healthy. Yeah. Yeah. Those things like um, you should be taking multivitamins, you should be drinking two litres a day, um, those sorts of things, um, which are, are pretty clear and the messaging is, and I understand the message around. But then I remember reading recently an article that talks about not drinking two litres a day, that in fact for some people that is incredibly bad. And um, for some people with certain conditions, it's, it is obviously bad to, to drink too much um, water. 
Um, and you're saying, Danny, that you use your intuition and your knowledge and wisdom to work out what's going to work with that client. And you always achieve those results in that required time frame that they're looking at. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And then they keep coming back for more. <laughs> so awesome. Um, yeah, yeah. So they, they achieve their goal and then they come back to rise up yeah. even more. Um, yeah. And I do find that when people work with me, it doesn't end up being about any, it doesn't end up being about fitness or nutrition. It yes, always ends just... up a bit about being the, about the mindset and they, they really build the confidence within them. And then they get really interested in learning more about themselves and then how they fuel their body so it's not about nutrition as in i'll go and eat an apple or i'll go and have uh-huh. you know water or whatever it's about you know what's going to make me feel good and what's going to make me have the energy i want and and be able to achieve the goals that i want so it's more about that side of things than the food and yeah. things like that and yep. i think with the two different like the two liters water that you're talking about like yes. people get caught up thinking okay well I have to drink two two liters of water a day but if you're having a herbal tea that's part of that two liters Mm -hmm. so if you're having like you know if you're having a green smoothie and you make it on water that's part of your two liters so you don't have to have two liters on top of all of that type of stuff yes yes and Mm. those are the sorts of things that people get get stuck on and go Mm. oh but oh I haven't done this or I haven't done that or gosh I've only had a glass of water when in fact you've had you know two or three uh, herbal teas or uh, you've had uh, soup for lunch because there's fluid in in those things as well but you do need to have a certain level of good plain old water though in your body to be healthy yeah yeah, absolutely. Yeah, because we're, we're majority water. That's, you know, that's why we go with the moon. Yeah. <laughs> Just like the ocean, <laughs> because we're made up of mostly water. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Um, Denny, when women have babies, their bodies always change Mm -hmm. in a number of ways um my kids are in their 30s now so it's been a while but i things like baby brain um baby weight uh all of those things are very real aren't they oh absolutely absolutely because you know my pregnant ladies they they always carry on about their (laughs) <laughs> their baby brain yes. and then afterwards yes. like the lack of sleep is the baby brain you know because so men yeah. can actually get that as well because yeah. you know my my husband with our youngest was very hands-on and both of us yes. sort of lost our minds <laughs> um, <laughs> and so yeah definitely and the baby weight is something that I'm really passionate about letting women mm. know that if you're breastfeeding you need mm. that weight to make the milk Ex- so yes you know it's okay to have some fat around your hips because you actually need that fat around your hips to create the milk to feed your baby. So, yeah. um, and you know, that's something that I had to learn along the years too, because when I had yeah. my first baby, I was only just getting into this and, mm. you know, I judged myself because of that. And I judged myself yeah. because, you know, I was in the fitness industry by then, but I wasn't getting the results I wanted. And then, you know, by doing the research and doing the learning, you know, it's, it's actually good for you to have that baby weight if you're breastfeeding. That's um, right. Your, your baby needs it. Yeah, to get all yeah. those nutrients. And there's a lot of pressure on new mums oh. to lose that weight or to appear a certain way when, in fact, Prius, our bodies are actually geared as women to for that weight to support that breastfeeding journey and for the weight will slowly come off over a longer period of time versus that, bang, I'm back to pre-pregnancy um, weight again. And, and the other thing is, too, that for some women – you may never go back to pre-pregnancy because of the fact that you've had another human being and your body changes throughout that process. Um, Your body's not the same again, is it? Yeah, and that's right. And then if you want, if you end up getting into wanting to really look after your body and and you get fit and you get strong after your babies because you want to have that energy, Mm. weights like weighing yourself, I'm an anti-scales person um, because weighing yourself is not like I'm 10 kilos heavier than I was before all my children but I'm actually smaller than I I was before my Ah, children so you know if I look at the weight 
I'm, I've put on 10 kilos since I've had kids, but I, I mm-hmm. still wear clothes from when I was 19, you know, so my yeah. husband actually teases me about it saying it's time to let go. <laughs> <laughs> No, no, no I <laughs> there might not. be shoes in there. I'm not going to let them go. <laughs> um, but, you know, so you have to really, um, if you if you want to measure yourself, me- like take measurements or, or think about the clothes that you want to fit back into, but they mm. also might fit you differently because you've just created a beautiful human and That's your right. body's changed shape. So um, yeah. I, I think it's really important just to take those factors in as well. Yeah, and then your age yeah. as well because I know yes. I, my kids are so spanned <laughs> out. I had yeah. my first baby when I was 30 and I had my last baby when I was 39. Mm. So the baby at 39 is another learning curve for me because I, I haven't just bounced say, back easily. It's yes. Three years later I still have like it's the tough. tummy and stuff like that because I was 39 so my body is not going to bounce mm. back because it's not got all the elastic elasticity in it and you know there's so much to factor in once you've had your baby yeah definitely and and you have to be a bit gentle with an aging body as well and not expect it to do what it could do when you were 20 so when you were Mm -hmm. 20 you could dance all night and stay out till 5 a.m and there was no problem but when you're 40 that becomes more problematic and we're not always gentle enough on ourselves in terms of that whole aging process yeah, and, and just giving gratitude to your body too, Tony. Like that's mm. your body, and this is me going into my mindset coach mode. But Absolutely, your body, please. Your body is not going to thank you if you don't thank it. So you think about when you've created a beautiful human and thank your mm. body for giving you that opportunity because, like, a lot of women don't get that opportunity. That's right. So how, yes. like, how wonderful it is for you to have that opportunity and thank your body for growing your beautiful healthy baby and allowing Mm. you to birth it all you know have you know have the cesarean it's all just as beautiful and then you know thank your body for allowing you to have that opportunity and I actually um encourage my clients to give themselves a shower of love so when they get into the into the shower like just touch every ounce of your body and just thank you thank you thank you all every part of your body all the way down and it Mm. just brings so much gratitude and thankfulness into you and your body feels that and then that is going to help you shed the weight I know it sounds like I'm crazy but it works no no I was going to ask you obviously it works because you've been teaching your your clients and your ladies that for uh you would have Mm. seen the results of that connection between self-love and and body and part of that is is too accepting that gosh I'm for five foot two well actually i'm probably five foot one now because you shrink as you age as well just add that into the equation (laughs) (laughs) but i'm short danny i'm never gonna be six foot so i'm never gonna have those long legs i'm never like yeah and it's about going well yeah that this is what i've got but i've got really strong shoulders and and really strong legs and and those sorts of things it's about uh pinpointing those things that are really wonderful about you that make you unique and focus on them rather than those those other things that are designed to to bring you down danny Mm -hmm. We've had a wonderful conversation about what you do and how you do it. I'm curious now. I want to know what your big vision for the future looks like. It's my mission to eradicate eradicate self-loathing in women so then we can bring this leadership of compassion and leading from the heart into our world and really shift, like be shift changes of this world. So if I can um, really vision myself to you know touching as many women in the world all over the world to step into a beautiful self-confidence so they can lead with heart so then the people that are watching them can then lead with heart i will just i'm living my mission fan that's so beautiful danny i um Mm. i i i pretty sure that we spoke about this when we first connected and and it's about my belief that that women are the the next generation it it will be strong beautiful women that lead from a place of their heart and soul Mm -hmm. that will change humanity Mm -hmm. it's what we need to see across the planet so i'm not just talking about our little world here in australia i'm talking about globally where we need to see 
better leadership, better decisions um, from, and I believe that that comes from empowered women because for millennia, women have not had enough seats at the tables in the echelons of power. We've not had the conversations or been part of the conversations that would make a difference. So from um, my personal um, space, I just it excites me when I talk to women like yourself who are involved in empowering women to live their best life because I believe that women will make the change in the next decade and that's not to denigrate men that's not to suggest that they are inferior or in any way um, uh, I'm not being derogatory in any way rather I am just saying that women need to rise to the table and that we need to be encouraged empowered and educated to speak up and speak more because the world needs change um, the world mm-hmm. is not in a great space uh, politically environmentally humanistically socially there's a whole range of not so great things happening and i believe that it will be the women quietly encouraging other women and quietly leading other women that will be that change and i'm so glad that you do the work that you do danny um i'm so glad that you've made this part of your mission to encourage women and and just the fact that it it starts with a conversation around their health, wellness and fitness and leads into a bigger discussion about what's going on in their mind and their head. And for some women, they've never had that conversation before, have they? Oh, yeah. Most women, like the, there's a very large amount of women that don't even know that they, they can have that conversation and they mm-hmm. don't realize that, that it can actually be effortless as well yes um you know if you if you're guided and you have somebody supporting you in finding who you truly are and then looking after yourself in health and wellness there's nothing stopping you from achieving whatever you want in life absolutely, absolutely. not absolutely and just that feminine energy um because you know we both need we need both masculine we and do. feminine energy it's Definitely. so important that everybody has it but you know if we have that rise of feminine energy then the, the it the rebalances males will the world bring in feminine energy too so it'll be so Correct. beautiful yeah, mm. yeah 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 um I, I, and i just again it, it's very exciting to live in this era it's mm-hmm. very exciting to speak to the amazing women that i do most weeks i speak to amazing men as well but it's the women that seem to be driving the change the world needs to see at the moment and yeah. that's exciting and i'm guessing danny for you that that's an incredibly exciting space to work in Oh, it's so exciting. And and to have the opportunity to work worldwide, because I do have quite a few clients overseas as well. And just to know that, you know, it's not just Australia that I'm making a shift change in. I can like expand all over the world. And I guess that's one thing that we can really thank COVID for. (laughs) <laughs> I was just going to say, out Danny, to each other throughout, I, you know? I was just going to say that we're now in this era where you, uh, Danny, in Australia can be working with someone in the UK, Russia, Canada, yeah. Germany, US. It doesn't matter where because you don't have to leave your home in Brisbane to still have that amazing impact and connection with women across the world and such um, exciting times yeah yeah and the fact that you can do it virtually and still have that same connection is just brilliant i think because Mm -hmm. it it gives women um particularly women with children the ability to to schedule their their time around um the different time zones who um where's the farthest country that you've mentored in oh um the farthest probably oh my goodness i'm hoping you're gonna say russia because i really i don't have anyone in (laughs) russia i'm just thinking oh damn i've gone to the The u.s and the uk yes um canada Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, I've gone to, yeah, lots of countries in Europe. Yeah. Um, 
Yeah, it's probably because the UK would be further than the US from us, isn't it? Yeah. Yes, so it, would it be is. The UK, it's twenty-four <laughs> it the, hours. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the UK is a long way. <laughs> it's a day away. I know, I know, because we're this like huge island that's just dropped in the bottom of the. <laughs> the world and it's just such a long way so for anyway. for australians the prospect prospect of being able to link on on glow on uh zoom for instance and to like even what we're doing now we're broadcasting globally and talking to people across the world in the this like it's a different time zone for them obviously but like we have that ability and that's fascinating and who oh, knows so what technology will be available like it, that my imaginative brain goes all over the place with the thought that the technology might be here to jump in a light speed craft and zap over to <laughs> Paris for lunch like Wouldn't that, that excites nice? me <laughs> yeah. wouldn't it wouldn't that I'm be coming. good <laughs> <laughs> absolutely absolutely <laughs> Denny We've had a wonderful conversation today. I'm yeah. really privileged to have you on the show. Just can you just tell us once more about your retreat before we run out of time because I'd really love to see if we can fill those last spots on your retreat this weekend. Yes, absolutely. So it's all focused around being the intentional you. So letting go of all the BS of 2021. Let's get rid of mm. that hangover of what we've been through for the last two years and bring mm. in an intentional goals of who you want to be now to lead the life that you have. And then we'll be doing like an, a beautiful Indigenous smoking ceremony mm. with a, a really great um, friend of mine, Kylie Lee Bradford. And then we will also be stepping into my masterclass, some yoga flow and a meditation where we will actually be implanting the person you want to be into your unconscious mind during that meditation. And then Powerful stepping into just stuff. a beautiful women's circle after that so we can collaborate and just join together in rising, rising up. Oh, Denny. It's going to be in Sanford in Queensland, Brisbane, Queensland. Awesome. Thank you so much. And if you want to reach out to Danny, it's Danny at dannyv.com. For those yep. of you listening live online, those links will be in the chat box for you right now. Um, but it's easy. Danny with a double N and an I, V, V, double E, exactly the way it sounds, dot com. <laughs> and um, Danny, thank you for coming on the show today and telling thank me you about so your much, amazing Danny. work with women. And I encourage you all to reach out and connect with Danny after the show. And that, my friends, is your lot for this week. I'm your host, Tony Lonis, and this is Everyday Business. Thank you, Danny. Thank you. Thanks, Tony. Thank you for watching and listening to Tony TV. For more inspirational stories, join us next week. Bye for now.